Good afternoon all. Uh, today I want to do some characterization of this uh, buck converter circuit. A very simple buck converter with a switch, a MOSFET, a diode, a Schottky diode, and the big inductor. Now I've got um, a watt meter on the output side of the buck converter and this power supply can be switched into uh, watt meter mode if you can get it to sit on P. Yes, there we are. So there's watt meter mode. Uh, for some reason it's measuring some input watts even though there are no output watts. I think that's because it's got uh, 0 0.001 for current and it's multiplying that by uh, something voltage presumably. Uh, yeah 12 volts that's right it would be wouldn't it 0 0.001 multiplied by 12 gives that uh, 0.012 power so it's just a little bit of offset in the uh, current measuring circuit. But anyway, we can at least get um, an approximate measure of what's in and what's out and therefore measure the efficiency of this buck converter. And what I want to do is measure the efficiency at uh, discrete steps, which is uh, 12 volts in. There's the 12 volts going in and then the steps of 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts, 4 volts, all the way up to 12 volts coming out and plot these on uh, a graph and have a look at how the efficiency of the buck converter changes depending on how much it's stepping down. Now I also want to measure um, output voltage so let's tweak the um, pot to get I don't know about 50% so 6 volts on the output. Oh let's back it off a bit. This meter has a little bit of uh, hysteresis it would seem. Um, and I've put the multimeter on the output terminals. Of course, it's doing some sort of averaging uh, because there is a lot of ripple on the output. Um, I've also put up a couple of um, measurements here. I've got DC RMS um, full screen, I think that is. Now that's measuring 6.35. I've also got uh, the average voltage over the full screen. That's measuring 5.87. So I wasn't quite sure which of these to use. That's why I then put my DVM on. And the DVM is kind of halfway between these two. More importantly, if I turn this up to full, which is 12 volts, the DVM is giving me exactly 12 volts. These uh, things on the scope are both saying 11.9 or just slightly under that, 11.8 something, which isn't quite right. If I also put it right down to zero volts, the meter says uh, zero volts or thereabouts. Yes, that's just settling down. Uh, these numbers are rather strange. We've got 120 millivolts on RMS. That's just probably the noise. And we've got minus 100 millivolts as an average. So I'm not quite sure why that's measuring minus. So actually what I've decided to do is to use the DVM because this starts at zero, uh, ends at 12 volts, and that just so that just looks better to me than these numbers which are just slightly odd. So I'm going to plot all this stuff um, setting the uh, pulse width modulation to different mark space ratios to get different um, sort of average voltages on the output and uh, then try and draw this graph. Now you may have noticed I'm using the bigger inductor here and if you're very keen eyes, you'll also have noticed that the frequency is now 15.6 kilohertz because I've done something to the program in the Arduino uh, to get a more, well, what I consider to be a more realistic frequency for this thing. Uh, 15 kilohertz was the frequency I used on Muppet 1. It does overcome to some extent the uh, limitations in the MOSFET driver I'm using here. Let me just uh, re-brightness that. Uh, so I figure that 15 kilohertz is about where I want to be. That does mean using the bigger inductor so that we get um, a continuous waveform on the output rather than a discontinuous. That looks pretty much continuous to me. That's a little bit discontinuous there, but over most of its range, it's pretty continuous and the voltage is floating. It's not uh, anchored to either zero or 12 volts. So I figure that's kind of about right. I'll go into the uh, software changes I've made in the Arduino in another video because they're quite complicated. Um, basically I'm 
not using very much C in this. I'm, I'm just uh, talking to registers directly so that I can set the PWM up so I can get exactly what I want. Um, I can get one of these frequencies which isn't available from the standard um, pre-scalar modifications. I had to do quite a bit more than that. But as I say, I'll go into that uh, in a subsequent video. Right, now I have done um, a preliminary set of um, gathering data from this and uh, it's here on my PC. Uh, I've plotted it as buck efficiency versus voltage. I will go into screen grab in the moment, but you can see there that the uh, red curve, which is efficiency, has a bit of a lump in it and that's probably because I took these results starting at 6 volts, working downwards and then doing 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's probably not the best way to uh, to do it. So I'm going to go through this again. Right, so let's start at the top. Let's go uh, right up to 12 volts. So we've got 12 volts in uh, and we've got the power there, 4.04 watts. And we've got the same number on the output. So that's 100% efficient, which you'd expect because the MOSFET is just on permanently. So there are really no losses in this, just the internal... Uh, resistance, the on resistance of the MOSFET and the resistance of this wire. This is DC now because it's not being switched. Uh, I think this meter, this watt meter down here is reading a little bit higher than this one. Uh, so that would explain that. But anyway, that gives me my reading um, 12 volts in, 12 volts out. Uh, power in is the same as power out. That gives me 100% efficiency at 12 volts. The next um, setting I want is 11 volts. So let's bring that down try and set this to uh, 11 volts. It does take a while for the meter to stabilize, which means that this whole process does take quite a while. And I've got to get this as accurate as I can, which is quite difficult because it keeps bobbing around. So I'm trying to look at that very precisely. Right, that looks pretty close to 11 volts, 10.98. Uh, I'll now get my power readings. 3.61 and 3. Point, now I might have to average that myself a little bit. It's got going 4952. So I might say 50 for that or 51. So 3.61 and 3.51. Right, let's bring this down to 10 volts now. Uh, again, as averaged by my meter. That's a little bit high. Let's come down. I'm making the tiniest movements on this pot. That's a little bit low. Oh, that's really great. Oh, that looks about right. Okay, so 10 volts, uh, 319 and 301. Right, down to 9 volts. I'm not going to show all these, obviously, because that's quite boring, isn't it? But uh, I'll get all these done and I'll get them plotted uh, into the graph and then we'll take a look at the results uh, on the curve of the graph. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, 279 and this one's jumping around a bit, but 2... Oh, that's jumping around quite a lot actually, isn't it? About 253, something like that. Uh, 279, 253. Right, that's all the uh, ratios done from 12 volts in. That should still be 12 volts, yeah, 12.00. Um, to 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 6, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, uh, 1 volt out. Uh, power in, power out. And I've got my graph, and it hasn't changed significantly. So I think my numbers I took on the first sweep uh, are pretty much the same now. So let's go and have a look at that uh, set of numbers and the chart. Right, so here it is. Um, I've done it in Google Drive. It's a Google Sheet, I think this is. It's a bit like Excel. So we have the input voltage, which stays the same at 12 volts. The output voltage, which um, initially was 12, then I slipped it down to 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That gives these calculated step-down ratios, which I've done as a percentage. And you can see that's uh, on the blue line. That's a completely straight line, of course, because uh, this is an arithmetic progression. Now, in terms of input power and output power at 100%, uh, 12 volts in, 12 volts out, 
we had 4.04 .04 watts in and 4.04 .04 watts out, so it's 100% efficient. I might have fudged these numbers a little bit just to get that to sit at 100%. These were kind of flicking between different numbers, but I figured let's put them like that so at least we know where we're starting. Um, everything else was measured, well these were measured pretty much as is, everything else was measured as is, and the red line shows efficiency. So you can see that where you're not stepping the voltage down much, the efficiency is higher, 100% where we're not stepping the voltage down at all, because there's no switching there, um, the MOSFET is just permanently on. As the buck converter is made to do more work, now you might think that stepping the voltage down is doing less work, but of course it's stepping the current up. So it's doing more work by transforming or converting the input voltage to the output voltage, and the current correspondingly goes up. Now it doesn't go up in quite the same ratio, because of course we don't have 100% um, efficiency at all times, but we are getting current gain. So we can simply see here that as the um, step-down ratio is more extreme, so the efficiency drops. Now it doesn't drop all the way to zero, it drops down to, uh, well here's the number, at 12 volts down to 1 volt, 69%. Uh, there is still this funny lump in the graph there. We've got two numbers very similar, very close together there, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's something to do with, um, well it's something to do with some thing that's not quite right, uh, one of these measuring devices not quite right somewhere along the line. It does look like I've got two numbers almost identical there, um, but I can't see that there are two identical numbers here. Of course this is, um, oh yes, it's 75.27 and 75.00, the two numbers that are very similar, but the input numbers are quite uh, different here, it's just we happen to have two similar output numbers. I don't quite know why that is, um, but the overall message I'm getting from this is that when you uh, make the buck converter step down more and more, and therefore step the current up more and more, the efficiency drops. So where to go next with this? Let's just put that back up to uh, about 50% because uh, it just looks more interesting like that. Um, well, one thing that uh, people have been asking for quite a lot is an output capacitor. So how about this? This is a thousand microfarads. Um, it's rather high voltage, but I bought these a while ago for Muppet One. Um, so what I'm going to do is put this thousand microfarad capacitor um, across the output to smooth the output so that it doesn't look like this anymore. It will be a much uh, flatter line when it's been smoothed. Um, now of course it's not needed for this light bulb. The light bulb uh, smooths its intensity due, due to just sort of thermal effects and uh, it has a fairly constant brightness. Remember this switching is being done at 15.6 kilohertz so you're certainly not going to see any flicker. What I'm interested in not uh, is whether this capacitor will smooth the output. I mean obviously it will but will it make the buck converter more efficient? So what I need to do is run through all these um, tests again with the capacitor in place to see whether an output capacitor um, improves the buck converter efficiency. If it doesn't, well then if your load is a simple light bulb, you don't need an output capacitor. If it does make the buck converter more efficient, then it makes sense to have this regardless of what load type you're using. Now, of course, I've got um, input capacitors. Uh, there's nothing here, but there are output capacitors on the power supply, so they're kind of acting as input capacitor. So it's really only the output capacitor that needs to be added on. So that will be the next step. Put that in, do another efficiency curve plot, and see whether capacitor on the output improves efficiency. Nothing to do with uh, in, uh, reducing the ripple. That, as far as a light bulb load is concerned is quite irrelevant. Um, but I think that's enough for today. Um, I've got my uh, efficiency plot and as we can see the efficiency drops as the step down ratio increases. I suppose that uh, was fairly predictable so yes I'm happy for today. Cheerio!